This quick tip tutorial explains how to model parquet floors from individual planks using Railclone 2.1. The 2D array generator provides an excellent way to create a wide variety of floor patterns using only a single enclosed spline to define the boundary. Many patterns of parquet can be easily created with minimal effort using Railclone's parametric pattern based approach to modelling. In the first example we're going to create a simple strip floor with a brick like pattern. The geometry to achieve this is two planks, one full length and one half length that we'll use to create the offset. There's a rail clone object already in the scene which I have selected and just to make things a little easier I've already added both the segments and a simple array generator. Before we go any further we need to define the size of this array and we can do this in two ways normally by changing the geometry x and y size or by plugging two splines in but for floors there's another possible technique. If we drag in a new spline object and connect it to the clipping area we can define the size of the array by going into the arrays properties, coming down to the clipping area settings and turning on extend XY size to area. Railclone can now automatically determine the size based on the extents of this spline. To see this in action I'm just going to plug the full length segment into the default input and then choose a spline from the scene. Now we can see we've got rows of planks but all the joints line up so we need to alternate the full length and the half length planks for the first segment in each of these rows. In order to do that we'll create a sequence. So drag in a sequence operator, plug both these segments in in any order and then change the increment at X to increment on Y and plug that into default. So now you can see we've got a row of the half length and a row of the full length which isn't quite giving us what we want we only want the first segment in each row to be alternated and then the remainder of the row to be full length planks so to do that we can use a conditional operator plug the sequence into true plug the full length into false and then plug the whole thing into the default input so now the current scenario is that it's false so you've just got the full length boards so in the conditional properties we'll come down to the segment x counter and we want it to be equal to 1 which is the default. So if you just turn that on you'll find that the first row now is taking the sequence and all the other segments are uh, taking the full length. So this gives us our offset pattern. Now the other thing we need to do here is to apply a material operator. Uh, we've got a material applied to this object which has got 36 different board textures on there. So to randomize those we'll just bring in a material operator, plug in this conditional to there, the material out to the default and then change this so that it randomizes the, the material IDs from 1 to 36. And that's that done. So that will give you a nice very even floor style. If you wanted to rough it up a bit and you wanted uh, the, the joints to be less well aligned you could easily come into both of these segments and change and randomize the transform so that we could scale it on the x-axis maybe between 80 to 120 percent and then we'll get a lot more randomization in there too. We can do the same for both. And the other thing you might want to do is to randomize the um, translation on the Z axis to create a slightly uneven effect. Uh, you can see at the moment it's perfectly flush and uh, very few floors are. So let's turn on translation and just increase the Z to something quite small like 0.003 and you'll get a little bit of randomization on the z-axis. You could do the same for both. So this is a style now that's easy to reuse. Um, all I've got to do to apply this to a different uh, floor is just to change the spline. So there's a spline in here somewhere. There we go. And um, if we hit camera and render this now, you can see how it looks.